This pile of soup is the aftermath of a grenade going off. It may not be what you expected to see, because when people hear the word grenade, they automatically think about this. Even though a variety of grenades exist, both for offensive and defensive purposes. What would happen to a US Marine when a grenade landed in front of him? How the British Special Air Service burned down the Iranian embassy with a grenade, by mistake. Three common grenade myths that are shown in movies. And why some grenades not only are not designed to kill, they don't even explode, is not what you think. Grenades can be split into two categories, offensive and defensive. A simple rule of thumb to differentiate offensive grenades from defensive grenades is to look at their effective kill radius. If the kill radius is greater than the distance that the grenade can be thrown, that is a defensive grenade and the person throwing it usually has to take cover. In contrast, offensive grenades can be thrown farther than their small kill radius and are usually used by assaulting troops. As you can guess, most fragmentation grenades, which are widely used by militaries around the world, are defensive grenades. Well, except when used to make booby traps. These grenades don't generate a big shockwave and work by dispersing lots of fragments upon detonation. That said, they are absolutely devastating if they detonate in your proximity. And this marine experienced it firsthand. The man you see before you today, Corporal William Kyle Carpenter, should not be alive today. On November 21, 2010, Kyle Carpenter and another marine were manning a rooftop security post in Afghanistan when a grenade landed inside their sandbag position. Without hesitation, Kyle moved toward the grenade in an attempt to shield his fellow Marine from the deadly blast. His injuries were catastrophic. He flatlined three times and each time he was brought back to life by doctors. Then he spent five weeks in a coma. Kyle had nearly 40 surgeries, anything from repairing a collapsed lung to getting a new jaw and teeth. He also lost one eye. In June 2014, Kyle Carpenter became the United States' youngest living Medal of Honor recipient. Early fragmentation grenades would blow up the body of the grenade, turning it into fragments. But modern fragmentation grenades have many small fragmentable segments inside, with a smooth skin on the outside. Upon detonation, they just go poof and raise up some dust. This is in contrast with what you see in movies, where grenades create a large fireball. How about pulling out the pin with your teeth? Is that actually possible? Take a close look at how the pin is secured on the grenade with its ends folded out. It takes anywhere from 7 to 17 pounds of force to pull the pin out. Even if you could do it with your teeth, you're almost guaranteed to pull out some of your teeth too. And unlike what you see in movies, there's almost never enough time to pick up and throw back a grenade that has landed in front of you. Another type of anti-personnel grenade is high explosive or concussion grenades, which instead of relying on fragments, cause most of their damage by shockwaves. The German stick hand grenades are a good example of this. Some concussion grenades can be converted into fragmentation grenades by adding a separate sleeve, which is meant to create fragments upon detonation, making them multi-purpose. Concussion grenades are not to be confused with stun grenades, also known as flashbangs. Flashbangs are non-lethal and are designed to produce a blinding flash of light and loud noise without causing permanent injury. The quick flash activates all the light cells in the eye, which makes it really hard to see for about 5 seconds. The loud blast can also cause temporary hearing loss. These effects can temporarily neutralize the enemies by disorienting their senses, making this type of grenade useful during hostage situations. Even though stun grenades are not meant to kill, they can start fires in the presence of flammable materials, which in one instance burned down the Iranian embassy in London. 
In case you're not familiar with the story, in 1986 armed men stormed the Iranian embassy in London and took 26 people hostage. After six days of negotiations with no luck, the gunmen killed one of the hostages. 20 minutes later, the British Special Air Service Force blew up the side of a balcony with explosives, while at the same time, another team lowered a stun grenade through the skylight. The stun grenade caused a fire that severely damaged the building. All but one of the hostages were rescued, while five of the six gunmen were killed. The six gunmen was given a life sentence, but was released in 2008 after 27 years. He now lives in the UK under a new identity. In contrast to anti-personnel grenades, modern anti-tank grenades do not use a shockwave to destroy tanks. The British sticky bomb of the 1940 is an early example, which had some drawbacks. The person had to get pretty close to the tank, and even then, there was no guarantee that the grenade would stick. Grenade launchers solved the problem of proximity, from the German Panzerfaust and the American Bazooka to the world-renowned Soviet RPG. But inside an RPG looks nothing like what's inside an anti-personnel grenade. RPGs and anti-tank weapons in general are categorized under shaped charges. Inside a shaped charge, there is a metal liner that forms a cone-shaped cavity, with explosives packed behind the liner. Upon contact with the target, the charge is detonated, which creates a pressure wave behind the metal liner. This in turn deforms the liner in a way that generates a focused jet of metal particles that shoot straight out at hypersonic speeds which looks like this. And that can cut through the thick armor of a tank like it's butter. This is a thermite grenade. And in contrast to the previous types of grenades that are thrown from a distance, this one is meant to be placed on its target. And it doesn't exactly explode. Instead, thermite burns at extremely high temperatures. What's left behind is hot, molten material. Thermite grenades are a good candidate for destroying your own equipment to prevent your enemy from capturing them. It could similarly be used to sabotage the enemy's equipment. If you've heard about thermite being used by a one-man commando to disable the Gustav gun, I got breaking bad news for you. That story is made up. In reality, the cannon was destroyed by Germans themselves the day before the arrival of U.S. troops. This next category of grenades are meant to signal, distract, or conceal. Smoke grenades that worked with white phosphorus had the ability to create a massive white cloud almost instantaneously. Although white phosphorus is pretty difficult to extinguish and would burn anything that it came into contact with. Modern smoke grenades are a lot less invasive and are typically used to mark an area, signal the troops, or create a smoke screen to conceal the movement of infantry or marines as they approach the shore. But the final question is, if you were to pull the pin out of this video, how much time would you have to hit the like button? 